Good afternoon, Bulba fans, and welcome to the second look, a chance to take a comprehensive dissection of the last Cherries match. And today, it's all about Barnsley. AFC Bournemouth's style in the first half against the Tykes, well, it was questionably regarded as being champagne football after a spell where we managed to put a few passes together, which culminated in a shot. Um, I suppose, though, that when you've been dealt Martini Asti for so long all season, a sip of Krug or Bollinger, that's always going to addle the senses somewhat. And for a certain beloved co-commentator on Saturday, those brief moments of joy that Cherry's displayed in the first 45 minutes against Valerie and Ishmael's men, it seemed to inflate a biased opinion which left Barnsley fans watching on iFollow and they were both bothered and baffled by what Willow was saying. Today, as ever, I'm joined by the Dream Team. Here's Tom. Tom, are you all right? Good, Sam. Jeff's here too. Sam. And also we've got Tiggs here. Hey, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so people who are listening to this are probably thinking, what are they giggling about if you're listening on the audio pod, which it can be downloaded on, by the way. We've all got our back-of-the-net mugs. And within the next couple of weeks, we will provide details of how you can get your hands on them. So, Tom, I'll start with you. A first half where we showed a bit of promise and a second half when we went back to the same old 3-2 to Barnsley. And let's be fair, they totally deserved it. Yeah, I thought that was probably a fair result. I mean, after the champagne stuff of the first half. Um, but no, listen, we haven't, we haven't uh, performed for 90 minutes for God knows how long. Um, it was the reverse this time. We decided to turn up in the first half, and yeah, to be fair, I thought we had some some decent movements, some decent decent play, and their high line. We kind of um, we seemed to exploit that a few times, but without really taking all our chances. But to be honest, at half time, I thought more of the same. They'll they'll still be open. We should be able to catch them a few times. As long as we keep the door closed, we should be able to get the job done. But again, they surprised me in a bad way, and they just can't. I don't know what it is. As soon as, as, soon as we conceded and um, went level in the second half, there's only one team that was going to win that game. They just seemed to lose all belief and all confidence. And we'll probably we'll come on to the way Barnsley played. But um, I said on the free throw, it was so, you know, you're looking at a team, um, obviously good good manager that um, has been getting a lot of plaudits for what he's doing at Barnsley. They've got an identity. I mean, people talk about their goalkeeper coming out and being a bit of a clown, but at least he, he was a sweeper keeper. He knew his role. Sometimes it was a bit heart and mouth stuff, I'm sure, for the Barnsley fans. But they knew they play with a high line. The keeper's going to come off like that. But they had an identity and they all bought into it. We just seem to just be thrown out there, just go through the motions as usual. Um, there's no real identity or, or style of play. And it was um, another frustrating one. And uh, yeah, didn't I'm, a bit, I'm not that surprised anymore, which is probably the, the sad thing. Mm. A certain co-commentator, Jeff, bought into how we played in the first half, especially, didn't he? Yeah, Willow is not renowned for his objectivity, is he? Let's be fair about it. And, and I think we're probably more objective. You know, we, we, we're we not seduced by the flashes of good play. I was actually counting the minutes in the first half and it was uh, 25 minutes before we had our first shot in that. That made the keeper do some work. And I think actually that might have been the goal. You know, so it's it's like... The same old, same old Groundhog Day for Bournemouth fans, Groundhog Day for this team, Groundhog Day for the managers. It, you can't can't get a 90-minute shift out of this lot. And we're coming to the conclusion they just don't have it in them to be able to do it. Actually, we did it against Watford. That was, that was probably the most complete 90 minutes of the season. And um, the patterns being what they are, we'll probably repeat that and go for, go for Swansea in the same way and win that 1-0. As I said on the free-for-all, Barnsley were, as everyone expected, their form dictates how good they are at the moment. And they just worked hard. They pressed high. They were reckless. There were some echoes of the championship winning squad there, Tiggs. And mm -hmm. in many ways, though, that actually made our game plan a lot more simple because they were leaving gaps. And that's the type of team we like to play against. But we couldn't punish them. So we totally deserve the loss. Yeah, yeah, we did. Ultimately, it wasn't champagne football. I don't know, keep coming back to it. But there were moments in that first half you could see, kind of looking at the positives, that Woodgate realised that if we stretch them, if we if we 
essentially had an extra man up there than we normally would. Um, we would create more space. And it did. There were moments in that first half, and you did think to yourself, cool, that, that, that was good. That works. That's, we've got a plan here, and this, this, could, this could really come to fruition. At one point, I thought, rather naively, just before halftime, that we had it in the bag as well. So there were some good bits with the bad bits. And Woodgate did have a week with the players previous to the game as well. So maybe, maybe we did see some some better stuff in there. I'm hoping we can pick it out this morning. Yeah, maybe we can. Maybe we can. And let's go on to the team that we saw then, Jeff, at two o'clock. Seemed to be a change of formation ever so slightly. I think there was only one or two changes personnel-wise, but with it came a change of formation by the looks of it. It's very hard to tell when they release those teams, but what mm. did you make of the side? Shane Long coming in. Yes. I cannot see the value of Shane Long in our team. Certainly not from the start. I don't recall anything useful that he did yesterday. Don't want to be harsh on the bloke. I mean, he's, he's an experienced player, but he's, 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 his touch isn't there. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's there to stretch the, the, the team, the opposition by running in behind. And I don't really see a lot, a huge amount of energy for him doing that either. I think Surridge would be better at doing that, frankly. So I don't get it. And um, the, t the change of shape yesterday, it, it was almost playing a 4-2-4, which kind of worked in that first half because um, Barnsley didn't play with a great deal of intensity. But in the second half, when they pressed higher on us and they, they brought off three subs who were up for the game and, and brought a level of intensity that we hadn't seen in that first half, we were just overwhelmed in midfield. We couldn't get out of our half, and that's that's again. It was it was redundant playing Shane Long yesterday. Mm. It's nice to see the players all coming together, wearing t-shirts to support Lewis Cook. Tom, uh, brief word for Lou, as they called him on the t-shirt. I mean, obviously, he'll have been watching that on, and you know, for the first for the first half parts of it, we actually played like a team that was together both on and off the pitch, didn't we? Yeah, we did. There was um, some good patches and stuff like that. And yeah, really, real shame for Lewis because he's he's been here before, and he, um, you know, and we had similar things with kind of Callum Wilson in the past and things like that, where it happens again. And I, uh, you know, he'll come back stronger. He's a, he's done it before, and he and um, seems like a, a lad that everyone likes. And he's he's had a, I mean, for a poor season, I think he's he's been one of our more consistent ones. He's he's pretty reliable um, without being sensational. So yeah, we're, we're going to miss him, and <clears throat> I'm sure he'll come back come out strong but yeah it was it was a good start to the game but I think they they played into our hands a little bit and you know we we're always going to get a few chances um, and catch them with the style they play we just we just had to be a little bit bit cleverer in my opinion and the change of system was there was part of me that kind of understood it we when we played them back in December uh, we went with a two up and uh, being four nil obviously under different management so I could see why he wanted to get someone closer to the Dom so I'll give him that but I remember when when Woodgate first took over the team and we went with a with a certain system, won a few games, then he changed it to yeah. a five, if you remember, and then we didn't win for a few. So we went back and then we've been good again and then he changed it again. See, it seemed a little bit odd. And my worry was that this is the first time he's kind of had a week with the players yeah. and we've just lost. It's like, But it's, it's a difficult one because I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he tried to get someone closer to Don because of the way they play. What I will say is I saw... Um, on, on social media and stuff that after how he did against them in December, Barnsley fans were, were pleased to not see Sam Surridge because if you remember, he was man of the match against them at their place. Mm. Um, and yeah, I agree with Jeff. I don't want to give him too much stick. He's he's here on loan, but I haven't. And he's bundled a few goals in, to be fair, but I don't really see what Shane Long offers us. And if you're going to play someone with, with Dom Solanke, I'd rather give it to a lad that, that always looks hungry and wants to be here in Sam Surridge. Mm. So change of formation, change of weather, Tiggs. I think we had about five or six different microclimates during that first half. That, that goal kick, that drop mm -hmm. kick after three minutes. I mean, you know, the cameraman was caught out. So were we. What was that all about? <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah. I, I you blink, blink and you missed that. I didn't really know what was going on. I think as well, uh, that kind of gives you a clue about how, how you're going to find parts of the game easier, maybe one half than the other, when you've got that kind of, that kind of wind blowing. It was interesting you talk about the formation change. After the game, Jonathan Woodgate, when questioned, answered quite defensively. Uh, no, it was the same formation. I was playing Dom in the 10 role, which 
Um, he, he did for parts of the game. I suppose he did drop back there. So um, he he really because I think because now he said that, it's, I think it's going to cause him a problem because I think now that he said that he's going to keep that formation, uh, he's going to try and try and always show us that formation. And I don't I don't think that's really what he should be doing. I think he's kind of made it more difficult for himself. Uh, in terms of working on the players for a week, I think we could start to see if we started to see a few partnerships starting to form around the pitch. It's March, so it's a bit late to be seeing it, but we are starting to see a few, and I think that's that's where we showed the most success in the game. The, uh, Jeff, by the way, you look depressed, mate. Doesn't he? You know, I'm sorry, but it's it's like how many times have we done this podcast this year, Sam? You know, yeah, how many yeah. times and. Uh, it just, I'm, I'm struggling with new things to come up to say. You know that that what what can you say? The 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 players aren't the right players. It's not a team. Patches of it is quite good, mm. um, and and we're still we're still poor from set plays. We still concede from crosses. Um, all three goals were avoidable yesterday. We still give away silly free kicks. You know, it could go on. Dan Juma passed, actually. That was the most amazing thing in that first half, I thought. Yeah. He passed, he passed first time and we scored. Never to, re never to be repeated because he had the chance the second half to do that and didn't. But, you know, that, that sort of shows that some progress. I'm, I mean, I'm clutching at straws. Yeah, I think in the final third, our, our touch just completely just goes all wrong. Uh, there was a great, there was a great moment that sort of reminded me of a number of years ago where Steve Cook. I don't know if it, it was an unintentional ball or or what, but it was a lovely through ball in the end. That was a that found an arch run from Dominic Solanke, almost Callum Wilson esque, and mm. his final touch was poor, and the goalkeeper managed to gather it. But it was good to see Dom making that run. And Bournemouth, we were we were playing out from the back, but Barnsley was doing what they do. They pressed really high. Uh, we dominated the ball. The visitors they were looking to counter the tykes had had a lot of energy and set pieces was always a danger we knew that on 12 minutes they had an inventive corner which was a ball to the edge of the box almost like bournemouth used to do connor chaplin tried to left foot it towards goal but that was blocked and then tom on 15 minutes another set piece but this time a goal and you know our marking all over the shop yeah it's been like that all season and that like you know, like Jeff said, it feels like we're a bit of a broken record. It's all the same things. We're um, falling short in the final third, and then, like you say, set pieces. We can't seem to defend them, which I always find bizarre because we've got so many people that in the general play, Steve Cook, Carter Vickers, Jefferson Lamb, they win headers all day. And um, but from a set piece, we don't seem to have that much organisation or know what we're doing really. And it always feels like the um, the attacker seems to just to, just to want it more, have a bit of a run on them, and. Yeah, and it was it was poor, and it didn't didn't surprise me. But yeah, it was um it was a shame. But at the moment, it does feel like teams can just soak it up a little bit and then put a few balls in the box, and it's not a good combination to have. You know, we're, we're too easy to score against, and we're too easy to defend against. I feel and it's a really bad combination. But yeah, to be fair, I remember thinking we were probably edging the game, so it was a a real blow to go one behind. And luckily, in the first half, we seemed to pick ourselves up from that quite quickly. Yeah, we were edging the game, though. We weren't completely... I mean, w with what Willow was saying, you would think that we were blowing them away. And in many ways, I feel sorry for Willow because if it was the usual commentary dynamic of him and Chris, who've worked together for goodness knows how many years, I'm sure Chris would have got right on top of it and probably put Willow in his place to avoid a lot of the criticism that he's got from Barnsley fans and also Cherries fans alike. But Jordan's not commentated with Willow that many times. But, I mean, it, it was a little bit embarrassing, Tiggs, to listen to. And we've seen a lot of the comments from our own fans, let alone what the Tykes say. And uh, <laughs> he's known for being optimistic, but that was too much, right? It probably was. And to be fair, this is the first season where Barnsley fans would be tuning into our commentary I think that's what makes it a bit irksome, isn't it? The mm. fact that you know that there are other fans. To it. We we know him and we can kind of giggle and laugh along and go, OK, look, he's he's, he's taken a molehill and turned it into a mountain. The way that he sees the game pan out 
Uh, and it's it's funny to us, but when you know that there are other fans listening to it, mm. and you know that they're going to be forming an opinion on our sure. us as a fan base, not just him as a commentator, because that's what they do, isn't it? They come on and they, you know, they think, oh, can't you said, you know, you think this about us? No, we don't. We don't. We don't think you this about you at all. You're great. Um, so yeah, it was a bit irksome, a bit uncomfortable. Jordan Clark, for his um, all his endeavours, he did try to correct Willow a few times. Um, but then uh, they, they just went into a, a fit of giggles at one point. And um, <laughs> when uh, when Steve Hard on, Steve Hard was, <laughs> I don't know how he did it. Steve Hard on, I think, is the name you're grasping for, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they were, Steve, uh, I'm grasping for a hard, uh, yeah. They were, <laughs> they were bringing Steve Hard on. And bringing I Steve Hard on. Up and, you know, like if it wasn't due to kind of licensing rights and stuff i would have popped that on twitter and it would have been shared to all and sundry maybe it has already i don't know but yeah that was that was one of the brighter moments but we did have a bright moment aside from that jeff and that was on 21 minutes where begovic gathered the ball from across talk us through it yeah um decent decent throw i mean the wind i think helped but release junior half halfway in in the uh, barnsley half controls it well um Nutmegs, actually, I'm not sure if it was a nutmeg, but he cut inside the, the covering defender, sets up Arnie, who had time to take a touch and pass it into the net. I mean, it was route one football, but but attacking at pace. And that was what was so refreshing. And they again, they'd obviously worked on that sort of move. Um, it worked like a dream. It was fantastic. And... Honestly, I was I was struggling to see how we were going to create a chance up until that point, but it worked, and you know, we were we were deservedly one apiece. I thought on the balance of play. There you go. I'll be positive. Yeah. So crack open the Krug, Tom. Champagne football, brilliant stuff. We were playing in behind them, and then we were playing in front of them. And one of the brighter moments of our season, yes, admittedly, it, it didn't result in anything. We, I mean, we hit the bar, but it, it was a nice bit of football that led up to that Stanislas shot, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a um, really nice bit of play. I think it was um, Jeff Lerman looked like he was going to shoot and then digged a lovely little lovely little ball for Junior. He caught it really well, to be fair to him. Um, he was really unlucky to hit the bar. But yeah, there was, I mean, we're joking about the champagne football, but I think once we got the uh, equaliser stuff, there were some good movements and things like that. I think you just, you know, because of their high, lo- high line, we were just finding ways to get in in behind them, and they're you know for the for the equaliser, like we say, the Begovic for out was that's how you've got to do it quickly, because they commit so many men forward, they press so high that you've just got to count on them as quick as possible because there's going to be gaps. And um, we found that when we played them before, we weren't. It's it's a weird one, but we all said that we thought Barnsley were quite good when we played them back in December, and we beat them four 0 because that's the way they're going to play. Um, they're going to get caught now and again. And we we started to find find some room and find some combinations, and it. That equaliser really looked like, right, OK, now we look in the ascendancy. We look like the team in control here. And there's definitely a few more goals in it for us. And um, we've got one more. Mm. Yeah, we did. And Tiggs, mm. it was a first-time delivery from Dan Gima. Like, usually he holds on to the ball, doesn't he? Yeah, and he usually the... stops and waits for people to get in front of him. But yeah. he actually played it first time. What was he thinking? I know. He was thinking like he was part of the team, which was crazy. <laughs> I think... I think as well with Dan Juma is I think he puts a lot of pressure on himself to get the goal when we need the goal. Um, so I think he, he, I think sometimes it gives me the impression that he thinks he's the only player on the pitch that could score that goal uh, or any goal. So yeah, it's really odd. He usually stops, <laughs> waits until there's two or three players in a line ahead of him and then sees if he can beat them, beats two and then loses the ball to the third. But this time he did, he saw, well, he didn't even look up very quickly at all. He felt that there were players over there and he put the ball across really, really quickly. Um, and there were, what, two players in the box running? Just just a word on the goal celebrations for both our goals. I mean, it, Arnie doesn't really get involved in goal celebrations, does he? You know, I like he doesn't smile much. He does a sort Apart of... from this weird thing he does with his hands. Weird like, thing with the hands. Like, emu, the, isn't it? Is it emu? Is, it? is that what it is? <laughs> well, but, but uh, if... I mean, obviously, if that were me, you know, I'd be amazed that I could do that. But if that were me, I'd be like going you'd, mad to... You'd be to, booked for taking your shirt off, Jeff. Exactly. Junior, you know, go over, give him a high five. him. you know, he'd be all over him because that was a fantastic pass that he did to set you up with. And then you go over and join in with, with Dom and on, on his goal because you made that. You're part of that. And you don't get any sense that he's really part of the team. 
I, I'm, I, don't, you know, I don't know whether whether he's particularly seen as part of the team. Maybe he's too much for an individual, too much for a maverick. But mm. it, 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 it's just baffling to watch. And then you watch the post-match interview. They've put him up on, on Cherry's TV for the post-match. And, and he talks about, yeah, you know, I passed the ball in for a Dominic Solanke finish. It's like... You call him Dominic Solanke? Don't you say Dom, you know, or <laughs> Dommy or something? You know, just, I, 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 don't, I don't understand. He, he just seems disconnected, and that's how he plays a lot of the time. So it was, it was, it was wonderful to see him put a first-time ball in. So I was so amazed that he did that, and then we scored. It was brilliant. Yeah, it's, I, I don't really like that formality because it does show that maybe there are some kind of rifts i don't know but anyway thomas jordan um i'll come to you next and <laughs> you know what we could we could have actually made that half a little bit you know because we had a great chance with um jefferson lerma who had a shot which was blocked and that was da- dan juma he played so you know i don't know i think um he won a free kick on the left hand side and then junior stanislas took the free kick the delivery was poor it came back to him and then he played over a lovely cross towards the far post, which Adam Smith was at the byline, and he managed to cut it back. And then Lerma um, had a strike. So, you know, maybe Willow was was partly right because, but for a block from the goal scorer for Barnsley, I think Hellick, he kept him in the game. Yeah, we were having, like I said, we were having joy, and once we got the once we got the equaliser, we were we seemed to gain a little bit of confidence. Think, oh, these lot can be got out here. Let's take the game to them. And um, yeah, half time probably didn't come at a good time for us because we were in the ascendancy there and um, going to one up and, you know, turning the game on its head, if you like. It half time allowed Barnsley to kind of regroup a little bit and um, us to, I don't know, hide away or whatever. Not play. We were playing off adrenaline for a bit, it seemed like, and we were really in the ascendancy and it was, it was good to see. But um, yeah, on, on, on Arnie as well, I feel there's a lot of similarities to what we saw with Brooks earlier in the season in the sense that they seem to, it's like they've got the weight of the world on their shoulders and they're the only one that can do anything. I feel like there's a lot of similarities when I've seen Brooks this season, the amount of times I think, God, he hangs on, holds onto the ball too long. And it almost feels like when Brooks was playing, obviously Arnie wasn't fit. We're saying you're our man. And now it seems the same with Arnie and they they feel like they're playing with all this pressure and you're the one that's going to get us out of jail. And you're, you know, you're our superstar. That's how it feels a little bit, but you know, whether there's anything in that, and like you say, it's, don't know about riffs or anything in the change room, but certainly with goal celebrations all season and things like that, it doesn't seem a whole lot togetherness, togetherness with the group. And we're seeing that with performances on the whole, aren't we, really? Yeah. Tom, I'll stick with you for this next uh, question. Here's Dan Rose from The Echo. In hindsight, you can look at this tweet and probably hold your head in your hands, can't you? So for anyone listening, Dan Rose from The Echo tweeted, watching the subs at half time. Jack Wilshire took a pass from Jaden Anthony and zinged one into the top corner from 30 yards. And Anthony just stood there and applauded. Thoughts, Tom? Well, it's nice that the pair of them are getting some um, football at half time, um, kicking the ball around. That must be good for the pair of them. Um, I'm still baffled now. I don't, like I said all season, I I feel that a lot more responsibility needs to go to the players um, rather than always looking at the, the management all the time, like we did at the start of the season. But baffled yesterday by, you know, I, as I said, I could um, kind of make allowances for why he tried to get another striker on because of the opposition, etc., etc. But to not bring Jack Wilshere on at all in that game was absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. We saw in the first half how high their line is. You just need someone to open the door, someone to, you know, play one of them balls through and be a bit inventive in the midfield. I don't, and, you know, it, oh, crazy that that bloke's just sat on the substitutes bench and didn't get a minute. Yes, it was just mad. Um, if he were to start him, say, Tuesday, I would maybe think, OK, maybe he'd already put in his mind that because of his injuries and stuff like that and his fitness levels, I'm going to play, I'm going to start you on Tuesday and not, you know, maybe. But I can't see it. I don't think Will Gates really fancied him at all since he's come in, which is really bizarre because in his first game um, when he took the, you know, took, took the management role, we beat Birmingham 3-2 and Jack Wilshere won in that football match and he was best player on the pitch. So uh, I don't understand it at all. Hang on, clue. So, second half tigs, triple change at half time for Barnsley. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, apparently they do that a lot. Mm. Um, it, because they play that high press because he wants them pressing all the game, he, he changes it because he knows he's going to have tired legs, which is a fantastic thing. To, if it works for you, it's amazing because he knows he can rely on every one of his players, I think. You know, he's, 
And it's we go back to it all the time. We're talking about players and we're talking about team, and it's it's not the team with the best players that wins football games. Um, and I think any one of our players, you talk about Premier League quality. Well, I don't know if they are, but I would say, and I could probably say this quite confidently, any one of our players would walk into any other Championship eleven, pretty much. You know, the majority of the clubs in the Championship would love to have any just just one of our players would change their team. So it's not necessarily about just the players, but how they perform together. And I think that's what Jeff kind of was saying earlier. You know, we're scratching our heads here saying, well, he should do better than that. Why isn't he? The, the communication between them, the com camaraderie between them is um, is still a concern, even after that, that Watford game. I think the two players, two of those three subs as well, were big physical presences up yeah. top. And that made a massive difference in terms of the way they dominated the play in our half and, and they won more free kicks and when they put the ball in the box I mean they looked like they were going to score every time they got free kick I thought and uh, or set play and uh, credit to them you know they know their strengths and they played to them and they played with the energy and the passion that you need to win a football match yeah and look though if Lerma's shot had gone in obviously Dom scored that would have been 3-1 at half time and then with their keeper making these bloopers, I mean, Dom, it reminded me of Divock Origi, that kind of angle, probably an angle that was a bit more favourable than what Divock had when he scored that goal for Liverpool in that 4-3 match in the Premier League. And his shot probably lacked power. It would have got there, but it certainly lacked direction. But it could have been a different game, Tom. It could have been 4-1 at that point. Yeah, it could have. And there were points... Um... Early in the second half, where I thought, to be fair, if we get the next goal here, I think this could be four or five because of the. And there was a lot of similarities I felt to kind of our first season in the championship under Eddie, where we were really brave, uh, really excited to watch, but we took a few beatings, didn't we? I remember losing five at Uddersfield and six at Watford because you've kind of, it's that, um, you know, because of the, you probably haven't got the technical or, you know, on paper the best team, but you play a, a real unique style to try and benefit you but occasionally you're going to get caught and um we had it a few times in that first championship season i remember where it'd be brilliant one week and then we'd get it for five because and I, I felt like oh this kind of what we did at their place um i thought we're going to catch them too much here if we just had a little bit more composure in the final third and i do think if we got the you know it's easy to say but i think if we got the next goal in that second half we, we would have won the game quite comfortably i think that's the whole thing with our group is we seem okay. And then as soon as we get pegged back, that's when they all go, oh, here we go again. And they just go into their shells and hide and think, Just, I mean, I'd, it's easy to say because I suppose every team would say it. But if there were fans in, fans in the stadium, I just feel like sometimes we would be able to, you know, lift them yeah. a little bit. They just seem to, as soon as something goes against them, they, they put their heads down. We were saying about that Watford game, weren't we? As It was a tight game. Then we got the goals. So we had something to hang on to and then we were fighting until the end. But um, yeah, yesterday it just felt that that next goal was so crucial. And as soon as they got it, we just went into our shot. And then, then you might as well take a point because there's no yeah. way we're going to go and win the game then. Yeah, and we didn't. You know, Once they did get the goal, it's Frazier who scored it. Um, our Tiggs talked me through it and or taught me through the rest of the game. <laughs> well, again, it's it's crosses, isn't it? Um, it it's, it's a big yeah. problem um, constantly. And I don't understand really what you need to do to to change that because surely they must be practicing that on the training pitch they must be looking at that after games and thinking okay how do we how do we counter it um and it's not working so then you think okay that's fine if we're going to let goals in we need to score more goals but that dries up which we talked about last time didn't we uh, and then once we're behind, we just can't lift ourselves. Yeah, go on, Tom. No, I was just going to say, we could literally, I'll, I'll be interested to see if we go back on the um, all the second looks we've done, you know, kind of this year or whatever. We could just play out one of the old ones, couldn't we? It's it's so, I think Jeff yeah. said it early on, It's it does feel like, I'm, I feel like I've said this before, do you know what I mean? But it is yeah. just the same stuff and that's what's so frustrating and just just being, yeah. being like that all season. I'm talking about set pieces. We've got Jonathan Woodgate and Charlie. I mean, he's, he was brilliant at defending set pieces. And like I've said so many times, it's not like we've got like a real... I remember with O'Driscoll back in them days, we'd have a real small team. And you think we're always going to get caught a little bit in the air. But we haven't got... We've got a big sort of... 
I mean, left hand side, left hand side needs to work harder to stop that ball getting anywhere near the six yard box, and they don't. And and I think Lerma, Kelly, uh, Steve Cook, you know, they, there's no not enough communication going on. There's not enough energy to stop that ball going in the box, and it's almost it. It's almost like we go, we go, we go a goal ahead, and we just think, oh, we're too good. They won't score against us now. You know, yeah. we think we can eat off. And um, or we have got Beggs behind who, who's, who's a miracle goalie, and we just want to win by just doing enough, and it ain't good enough. And we have it every flipping week, or actually two out of every three games, because they wake up and think that, and then change it, and then they lapse back into this. Um, Oh, it was just depressing as hell. I think energy is a really good word, actually, Jeff. I think that's the word I've been looking for, energy. And like the subs that we made, I mean, Billing, I think Billing can be a great player. But energy, he doesn't give you energy, does he, really, ever? He doesn't Doesn't win headers. He doesn't run back. You cannot take him off for... You cannot bring him on and ask him to play Pearson's role against a team like Barnsley. And if was that what they were doing, or were they asking him to play further forward? Because then you're asking Lerma to be overrun. We're already overrun, so you're asking Lerma to be more overrun. It's it's mm. like it's crazy. It doesn't I mean, for me, I think Woodgate is terrible at making subs, and I think he's he's also uh, affected by the big reputations of uh, Lerma, Billing, um, Long, yeah. and and affected by that so that players who ought to be give, given more of a chance i mean you know big reputations wilshire you're right tommy yeah. should have been on and you 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 need to keep pearson on because at least he's the one player who's got that energy to track in midfield whereas big jeff love him like i do you know he, he switches off when we go one goal ahead so often he does that and he did it yesterday and it cost us are we in danger of contradicting ourselves here because after the Bristol City match, we were waxing lyrical about Philip Billing and saying how much he came on to change the game. But do you do you think it was, I mean, you know, Tom, you said on the free-for-all, he was playing as part of a two. And we've said so many times that never, ever works with Philip Billing. He's always better as part of a three. Do you think that was maybe more of a problem and that dictated how he played more than his own sort of technical performance, maybe? Yeah, I'd say so. I think, um, you know, Jeff just said then, you know, asking him to come on for Pearson was just, it's just pointless. Um, we've seen it all season. If, if we went back and watched every game and marked down how Billing played, the only ones where he played well, and he has had some good performances, would all be when he's in a free and he's the advanced midfielder. He even done it when we're in the Premier League. I think he had a couple of games. I think Villa was one where he was really good. That was when he was the advanced midfielder. That's clearly his position. And yet we're still just chucking him on, you know, the like for like swap for Pearson. That was really really odd um you know anyone can see you know what role he's good at and then he's kind of irrelevant in any other role it seems and um yeah i'm a, I'm a big fan of jeff Lerner as well but when you're behind in a game i almost sometimes feel like well let's we never seem to um be brave and take off that defensive midfield player in in, in Lerma and maybe try and get someone who's going to open something up a little bit um but yeah i mean the subs are, i felt like that um ever since woodgate's come in we're allowed five subs by the way you know, at the moment, that's what's even more baffling. He never g- gets near it, and it's like he's. Uh, I mean, you've got so many p- players on the bench that, well, yeah, we don't know a lot about, but they're young, they're hungry, and they're attacking as well. We had a lot of attacking options, um, you know, Raquel May and Anthony and things like that. And he just, just the same thing, you do the same things, we just do the same things. So we go, right, we're yeah. losing the game. When we were last losing a game, we never come back. But let's make the same subs as we did last time. Why? What, what, what do you expect to change? I don't... And like I've alluded to earlier, you've got two teams out there. I thought it was um, really interesting to see. You've got a, an upcoming manager for Barnsley who's got a team that are buying into a certain unique style of play and identity, like we said about the goalkeeper and the high line. And they make them free changes at half time. And they all buy into it and they're a group. And then we've got us who have just... from from the top, we've made ridiculous decisions. We're just getting in managers that don't manage. And then we've got a manager that doesn't seem to know what he's doing and doesn't really make the right changes. Then we've got players on the pitch who just go through the motions and don't seem to be buying into anything and just go through the motions all game. And it was so evident. And there was one team that deserved to win that game and because they'd done everything right. And they were, we're so 
reactive as well. We don't try and change the game. We wait until we go behind and then go, oh, we better... Uh, Billing's a little bit more attacking than Pearson, so we'll just switch them two. And it says all about Shane Long when you need a goal and you take him off because he doesn't do anything. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When when Aston are like, okay, I'm going to go back two years or even three years, right? This time, after 36 games, a few seasons ago, Aston Villa were six points behind the team in sixth and they put together a run which ended up getting them promoted to the Premier League I think their run it turned on that Jack Grealish incident where against their rivals Birmingham fan came on he punched him in the face he went to score the winner it seemed to create that uh, siege mentality I don't think Bournemouth have got the stones for it, Tiggs, but if we did manage to somehow turn this season around, I think we should change our kit to a black and white striped jumper and be carrying around swag bags everywhere because it would be robbery, wouldn't it? Because we don't deserve it. No, we really don't. And it's hard for me to say that because when you look at our, our recent form, um, it's not it's not terrible. You know, look, look at our last five games, OK? It's not... We've done all right, really. What we got uh, a loss, a draw, and some wins. So it's not it's not terrible form. Um, but when you look at performances, you can just see the whole story rolling again and again and again. You know, we can't well, we can't win games uh, without a little bit of luck, can we? And really, after coming down from the Premier League, being told that we've got these Premier League players, um, we still haven't won one game really where we've really looked like the quality that the upstairs at our football club think that we have on that pitch. The rot really set in after that Stoke game. You know, since then we've won four, drawn four, lost one, four, drawn three, lost seven. Yeah. And that's mid table form, you know, just about lower mid table form actually. And I think the January transfer window destabilized a lot of the, the good stuff that had been happening, good stuff, you know, even then we were still putting in 45 minute performances, but you know, we were two nil down against Reading, come back and beat them four two. So we, we still had that self-belief and confidence that we could score goals. And um, that has totally disappeared. We're happy to win games one nil now. We're happy to, to go away to forest and get a nil nil. You know, that's the summit of our expectation. Um, whereas in the autumn, a team like Barnsley, we'd go up to Oakwell and beat them 4-0 and we should have scored four yesterday, but we didn't and we end up losing the game. Um, it, it's it's really it's really noticeable how 2021 has been a, an awful year for this team. They can't shake themselves out of it either. Yeah, and who would have thought, Tom, that uh, JT would be seeing Premier League football before AFC Bournemouth, eh? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased for him. But um, yeah, I've, I've, I mean, I've, I've been getting a, a lot, a lot of stick, and you know, in terms of I was, I was always trying to remain positive, as I say, when JT was here. But what I've said to a lot of people is, I was remaining positive when we were playing bad but winning. Now we're playing bad and not winning. So what does everyone want? Because I'm telling you now, it took us a long time to, to lose a football match with Jason without playing well. Um, you, t- there's no way when we talk about any performances that were we played some good football. None of them were under Woodgate. Right, um, Birmingham first time round, Coventry, Huddersfield, I, I, and that—that that was always my point. Is with this group of players switching Jason Tiddle for Jonathan Woodgate, you really think that's going to make a difference? Because when everyone kind of decided maybe it's time to to get rid of Jason Tindall, we were saying because we're falling too far behind the top two here, and we're only going to get playoffs. Now we're saying it's impossible to get top two, and we're hoping we can get playoffs. So how much worse has it got? Because People seem to just, you know, say how bad Jace Tinder was. We, we're so much worse. So much worse. In my, look how far off we are now. To the top. We're 20 points behind the top. Unbelievable. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was not all rosy. And, there were, you know, we were not looking good. Really, But on in terms of results, he had one little bad spell. And Jason Tindall could turn around and, you know, he was doing a few interviews, wasn't he? And he could turn around and go, I was never outside the top six. Never. And taking Woodgate long to be outside the top six, is it? You know, and... In, in terms of his role, it looks like he's going to kind of go in as a two um, at Sheffield, Sheffield United. It doesn't surprise me at all. Good luck to him. Je- uh, Sheffield United are probably looking at it and going, they're relegated, aren't they? Let's be honest. So I think it's actually quite shrewd from them um, in terms of if they don't 
think Wilder's going to be the manager next season. They might as well do it now because they're down. So it gives the new people uh, a bit of time to come in and then get ready for next season and see kind of what players they want to go with. And um, they'll probably look at it and go, Jason Tindall is a number two. Unbelievable. You know, what they did at Bournemouth. And then he's also got that championship experience as a manager. And yeah, it didn't work out for him. But he took over a team that had just got relegated and never left the top six. So they must be looking at it going, he's a real good bit of experience that could um, could help us. I think it's a good move for him. I'm, I'm really pleased for him because yeah. whatever we think, he's he's been a legend of this football club, hasn't he? So, um, yeah, the only thing people say he's done poorly was um, a manager where we were never outside the top six, which we now are. Mm. Very interesting. Any, um, any final thoughts before we close this off, guys? Um, I reckon we'll get we'll get about eight points from our last 10 games. And I think we'll probably finish about 12th or 13th playing like we did yesterday because we got some tough fixtures coming up. And um, I I think we should, we should already, I, I'm sure, you know, there are people already thinking about next season. You know, it's next season that's going to be the one that, that matters. Get the, get some new players in. Don't know who they are, but we've got to be scouting for them now and the recruitment team have got a big job on to get a group of players who are hungry for success and to play the type of football that that we want as fans and that the the some of the players who are core to this squad will be capable of i'm going to counter that actually i, I think we'll I, I totally agree that we're, we're absolutely rubbish but i don't think we'll finish 12 30. i think this team have done it all season where we're rubbish for a few games then we'll get a few wins and go oh, hang on and then we're rubbish again i think we'll probably continue like that and um it wouldn't surprise me if, if we finish with but I, I think we'll probably we'll either just miss out or just scrape our way in to be honest um regardless we ain't, we ain't going up. I will uh, happy to clip it up. I'll get a Jonathan Woodgate tattoo if we get promoted to the Premier League. I mean, we ain't getting promoted to the Premier League. Um, but if that's something, if that's something that might you know inspire the boys. Um, but no, I, I do think I, I totally understand what Jeff's saying. But I do think we'll just we've done we've done this so many times, and then we suddenly win a few games, and I, I think it will continue like that. Um, I, if I had to put money on it, I think we'll probably just miss out. But it wouldn't surprise me if we just kind of bundled our way in. But, yeah, I don't think we've... Yeah, you never know once you get in the playoffs. But I don't think we've got enough. And I think we're just... I almost feel like it's a bit of a chore now just to get to the end of the season as a fan. And now, it's, it's so sad that now, you know, we're in a blimmin' lockdown when there's nothing to do. And I'm thinking, oh, we've got a game Tuesday. I'm not even looking forward to it. It's going to be... But, yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll just be consistently inconsistent for the remainder as we have been all season. I think the mistake that, that we've probably made, mistake's not the right word, the, the, probably the oversight is that we've got, uh, we've had managers and, and, you know, they've done all right, depending on your point of view. But we don't need a manager at AFC Bournemouth, unfortunately. We need a leader. And, you know, we, we lack leadership in every aspect, it feels to me. And that's on the pitch and that's, you know, managing the team from a, as a leader. They're not, pulled together there's that story isn't there when eddie howe came back and you had all those players that that um that had been uh put together as a team and they all went down to the beach together yeah. and you know they all bonded together and they they were a good team that team of players and equally under kevin bond you know that were a good that was a good team of players he couldn't get them to quite get it um but eddie could so I think it's not about a manager, it's about a leader. And I hope, I hope that's what our board are sitting down and looking for right now. Mm. And there are managers with world-class CVs out there, as we know. So hopefully we pick one for next season to, uh, to give us a fighting chance of getting promoted. Um, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Well, it's not been a pleasure. It's been awful. But <laughs> anyway, we've gone over it. Tom, thanks very much. Cheers, sir. Uh... Tiggs. Cheers, buddy. Cup's empty. Cheers, sir. <laughs> and Jeff? Not sure I'll be using the mug of motivation on Tuesday night, but who knows? Hey, and, you know, this may not be the only cup we're getting our hands on this season. Anyway. <laughs> oh, that's where we've got oh, a little bit nice. of hope. We've got a bit of hope, haven't we, with next uh, weekend's fixture. Anything can happen. Yeah, who you knows? Yeah, anyway, thank we can concentrate all. on the cups, then. That's what you're going to say, isn't it? Exactly. Well, you know, why not? Why not? Uh, I think I think Tuesday will probably dictate that, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Leave your comments below. And um, Barnsley fans, you 
you've given us a lot of praise on the free for all for our comments. And you know what? If if we kind of had that fixture a, a lot more earlier in the season, I think we would probably be a bit more snide. But we're just resigned now. So yeah, credit where credit's due. You did deserve that uh, that win. Uh, and if you're watching this on Sunday, Mark Pugh. And it's the playoff push. Yeah, like I say, we are five points out of it, but it's still doable. It's happened before. And Mark Pugh gives a virtual team talk. What would he say to the players? Find out tonight. Until then, up the cherries, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah.